I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Job, chapter 25, and let's focus on verses 1 through 6. Bildad the Shuki said, Dominion and fear belong to him. He makes peace in his high places. Can his armies be numbered? Or on whom does his light not shine? How then can humans be righteous with God? How can those born of women be clean? Why, before him, even the moon lacks brightness, and the stars themselves are not pure. How much less a human who's merely a maggot, a mortal who's only a worm. Whenever a person steps away from God's word and they attempt to establish a righteousness apart from it, well, they eventually have to deal with two opposing factors. Number one, that God is holy. And number two, mankind is spiritually bankrupt. So apart from God, how could you be holy? And if we say that mankind can earn his salvation through their good works, well, then we're exaggerating man's righteousness while humiliating God's holiness. If we acknowledge that God is uh, ungracious as a righteous judge, well, one who could never be pleased with mankind, well, now we're hopeless. And there is humanity's dilemma, isn't it? How can sinful people commune with a holy God? And every major world religion outside of Christianity errs in one of those two perspectives. So, what distinguishes the follower of Jesus so that we can confidently say that we're saved? Well, the distinguishing factor between a Christian and everyone else is God's grace and His mercy. Grace in that He has purchased our salvation because we never could have afforded it. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 is very clear. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift. It's not from works, so that no one can boast. So, we get grace from the Lord. We have mercy, and that God does not punish our sin to the extent that we deserved it. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God proves His own love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, number one, you say, well, mankind cannot save themselves. It's true. That's why Jesus died to save us. And then you turn around and go, yeah, okay, well, but you're a sinner, and so there's no way that a righteous judge could could look at a guy who's a sinner, and you say, okay, yeah, but you see, he's not just righteous, he's also gracious, and that he would allow for Jesus to suffer on our behalf. In today's passage, which is the entire 25th chapter, by the way, Bildad's theology contradicts his earlier arguments, along with those of his friends. Now, up to this point, the arguments have been simple. They say, if a man is righteous, God will bless him. But if he is unrighteous, God will judge him. Therefore, hardship is in your life. There must be unconfessed secret sin. But today, Bildad says that it is impossible for anyone born of a woman to be considered righteous before God. And that's what the politicians call a (laughs) flip-flop. Only in the Bible do we find a God who imputes righteousness on the basis of faith, as opposed to works. Only in the Bible do we find a Messiah who is fully God and fully man, one who becomes our sin offering and who offers salvation, which he purchased free of charge to anyone who would believe and receive it. Satan's argument, spoken through Job's friend Bildad, cuts to the righteousness and the deity of Jesus. Notice his language when he says, how can those born of a woman be clean? Well, the fact is Jesus was born of a woman. The word became flesh. He was deity in diapers. And he walked among us in human form. And we learn of that in John 1.14. The The word became flesh and dwelt among us. God bridged the gap between himself and mankind. He is fully God and fully man, this Jesus. Right? Through the God-man Jesus, God has bridged the gap between deity and humanity. He distinguishes as saved anyone and everyone who surrenders to Jesus as Lord. Have you surrendered to him? If not, you should go to our website because there's a very clear presentation of the gospel there, and I even lead you in a prayer where you could surrender to the Lord yourself. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. 
Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And your giving to Groundworks Ministries transforms lives. Would you consider making a donation to Groundworks Ministries today? We need your monthly support now more than ever. Donating is secure and easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. You know, another way you can help is to tell people about Groundworks Ministries. Share these podcasts with friends and family. You can cut and paste them, put them on your social media. And you can always lead people to our website, groundworksministries.com.